holy, 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 holy. Ah! Holy, holy, holy. Ooh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus in all that he has done for me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, for saving me. I'm a wretch undone. A vessel, a willing vessel. Use me, oh God. Use me. I don't count this lightly that I'm used by God. I don't take it for granted when my bishop asks me to minister. I give him all I got because God pours all he has in me. I'm full, y'all. If I don't say nothing else, he's done enough for me. If I don't tell anybody else about anything, I'm going to tell them about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, but all he can do for you. He's not that kind of God that he keep it just for me. And I'm a sharing person, so I'm going to tell you about God's goodness. I'm going to tell you about how good he is. I'm going to tell you what he can do for you. I'm going to tell you if you walk with him, he'll never leave you. I'm going to tell you all I can tell you about God. Go with me to Proverbs, third chapter, starting at the fifth verse. It's a familiar scripture but it's for today's praise. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. If I was going to use for a subject on today, it is, I got next. Go with me, we're going somewhere. To trust in the Lord me, oh, sorry. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. God, as I step out and you step in, you take control. Lord, let the people not go out the same way they can. Touch them, heal them, deliver them, set them free. Lord, give them a story, give them a conversation, give them a word for encouragement. God, I'm asking you to do this in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You can have your seats. To trust in the Lord means more than believing in who he is and what he says. The word here for trust can also mean to have confidence in. Having confidence in something means having an assurance that leads to action. Trust in the Lord is a faith that lets us boldly serve. This confidence should penetrate our whole being. To trust him is an action. You cannot just stand around doing nothing on this journey with Christ. What do you mean, preacher? I'm glad you asked. What I mean is... Go with me. I want you to imagine getting ready to play double judge. See, they all in my sermon talking about what we're going to do next week. But that's okay because that's all coming together. I want you to imagine getting ready to play double dutch. You're getting prepared. You have to time it just right when to jump in. You're anticipating your turn. I got next. 
I got next. I got next. You jump in and you don't worry about the spectators, the naysayers trying to distract you. You are paying attention to, to who is with you trying to complete a successful jump. Now, do I have any spade players in the house? <laughs> when a game is called, the teams are established. Two teams are playing. Another team comes on the scene. What do they say? I got next. You pay attention to your opponents. You strategize how to get them to renege or underbid, but you are ready when it's your turn to jump in. In all circumstances, are we then to believe that life will be easy and that no trouble will come against us? We all have experienced enough of life to know that isn't the case. Instead, what we can expect is that our journey will ultimately lead to him and we will not be shaken when trials come. We as believers have to believe like Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes but its lease will be green and will not be anxious in the year of the drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. So if we look at trust, I'll give you a few examples in the word. Joseph continual trust in God through difficult times. He was sold in slavery, yet he stood fast to what was right. He was thrown in jail unjustly, and yet he was faithful. And the Lord was with Joseph, and gave him, his, him successes, success in whatever he did. The story of Esther shows us how bravery and trust in God's plan can overcome even the most dire circumstances. Despite the threat of death, Esther stood up for her people and saved them from destruction. When Noah was forced with impending flood, he trusted God for 120 years as he built something that had never been built before for an event that had never happened in the history of the world. I got next. What do I mean by next? I'm next to bless you. I'm next to encourage you. I'm next for the healing. I'm next for deliverance. I'm next for prosperity. I'm next to give you what God has given me to give to you. I'm next. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. When we're serving God, we can't stand there twiddling our thumbs. We got to be in the right position. We got to have the right posture. We got to go when God said go. So if you're not ready, how can you be next? You got to be ready in this kingdom building days here. We got to be ready. When we're getting ready to go out into community, we got to be ready so, so, to say, I'm next. I got your supplies. You don't have it. I'm next. I got your books. I'm next. You need a backpack because it's all about showing you who God is. But you got to be ready. So I'm next. You cannot be about God's business doing things in your strength. God cannot use you when you're not in, a, in position. When we lean on our own understanding, we trust our own knowledge and discernment to support our, us through life. Jeremiah 17 and 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. We cannot walk in our own flesh. There's no good thing come from this, but it's the spirit that runs through us. Leaning not to our own understanding means to actively pursue God's will for your life and doing things God's way instead of your way. If your way is different, it is living with the confidence that God always does what is best, even when you cannot see it as so. The journey that we are on is a faith walk. We walk by faith. 
The world is looking and has an opinion. God's people are moving, but we are silent. To lean not on your own understanding is really just another way of saying we need to live by faith. Daniel was leaning on his own understanding when he was being led to the pit to spend the night with some hungry lions. Stephen was leaning not on his own understanding when he was stoned to death for proclaiming Jesus as the Christ. Abraham was leaning not on his own understanding when he and Isaac were walking up the mountain to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. In all our ways, acknowledge him. I'm going to stop right there. Last in, uh, July, I came here and I testified about the ram in the bush, about how I knew that position was mine. I was going to Westwood. I knew, I knew, I knew the, the principal was so happy to talk to me. She couldn't wait for me to meet her staff. And I went for that interview and they said, oh, you're overqualified. I don't know what that really means. <laughs> I really don't know what that really means unless I go work and stop and shop bagging. I can understand that depth. But what I was going for, I don't really know what that meant. But I said, Lord, you told me I was going to Westwood. I testified about going to Westwood, that the job was mine. And he said, it is well. <laughs> That's exactly what, it is well. I said, okay, well, let me start looking again. I did not worry. I had a great summer. I enjoyed my summer. I traveled. I did not worry about not having a job. <clears throat> I didn't worry. But that's the part about trusting, having the right posture, being in position. So I applied for a couple other jobs and and I had an interview in, in Needham, and it was like three weeks from when I applied. And I was like, I don't understand. School starts on the 30th. This interview was the 25th of August. What is happening, God? He said, it is well. I said, all right, God. So I went and was down on the vineyard the 14th to the 19th of August. And that Thursday, I got a text. I have an opening. I just found out I got an opening, and I want to know if you're interested. And I texted him, and I said, tell me more. <laughs> and so she said, uh, well, I just found out at the high school that person is leaving. So I named her name. I said, oh, she's leaving? She said, I'm in Quebec. I don't know, but let's talk about it next week. But the job is yours if you want it. Do y'all know where it's at? Westwood. Don't tell me what God can't do, what he won't do. I had to just stand there and trust him with all I had. And let me tell you something. The job I left, I was a contract worker. I didn't have any benefits. Where I'm going, I get vacation. I get sick days. I get pension. I get paid through the summer. And I get more money. Don't tell me what God won't do for you when you trust him, when you're in position, your posture is right. Yes, I got next. Yes, I got next. Why do I have next? Because I got to tell the goodness of God. I got to share what God is doing for me. Because if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Who's waiting on something from God? Tell him, God, I'm ready. I got next. You want to raise your hand and say, pick me, pick me, pick me. You don't want to stand with your hands back because he can't see you. But if you're ready, get out in front. The front line is ready for the warriors, and it's time to get busy in God's kingdom. It's time to serve him. It's time to share. It's time to give. It's time to bless. <laughs> in all your ways, acknowledge him. To acknowledge God in all our ways is to know him. That's another action. Did you all know that serving God is a lot of action? It's a lot of moving parts. There's no standing still. 
And even though you're an individual and you're an individual and you're an individual, but collectively we're a body. And the body, we can move in numbers. And number is power. And when we move in power and we move in numbers, we can get more done. So what I say to us, not you or us, it's time to move in numbers. If we want to see God move, move in numbers. There's power in numbers. Building a relationship with him. How do you acknowledge him? You got to get to know him. Mama may have prayed you through, but mama can't tell you about God like your relationship with God. Because God knows the interpersonal things about you that you won't tell nobody. And you don't even have to tell him. He already know. He's just waiting for you to surrender and say, all right, God, you got this. I can't do it in my own strength no more. When you're building a relationship with him, reading his word and allowing him, allowing the Bible to transform you. Has anyone ever had the Bible come alive in the mirror. I've seen it happen. Reading the word and the scriptures start dancing on the mirror. <laughs> that means he's calling you and you're supposed to say, I got next. I'm ready, God. You know how when the Lord was calling, calling, who was it, Samuel? It was Samuel. And he thought it was his master. But when the Lord knows your name, and he knows how to just call you the right way. You know it's not mama calling you. You know it's not daddy calling you. It's not your friends calling you. Because there's a special relationship you got with God that you know his voice. And when he's calling you, he wants to talk to you. That means sit up, get ready, get a pen. Because he got something to say and he wants you to take it in. Realizing we have to die daily to grow stronger in God. We all got stuff. We all, we all got stuff. If we were perfect, God, Jesus would already came because he would be looking for a perfect people. We strive for perfection, but we're not perfect. So in that, keep moving, keep learning, keep growing, keep changing. Recognizing that God is the one who, who works in our lives in power, wisdom, goodness, and justice. There's a lot of things going on out here. We can't do it in our own strength. We have to trust God to work it out. We have to trust him and acknowledge that he is the keeper of our souls. That he's the author and finisher of our faith, that we can't move without him, because we'll be out of order. Anyone know what out of order is? You're out of line. You're not in your lane, and whatever happens is not God's fault. It's your fault. The more you know God, the more you will love him. The more you love him, the more you will want to obey him because you know that will please God. And if your ways please him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And what did Bishop say? The desires, he'll put them in you that you're like, yes, that's what I wanted. <laughs> it's something about God and his eloquent way. And you'd be like, yes, that's what I want. That's what I've been wanting. But that's just like God. If we trust him, we are able to rest in his will for us and let him direct our paths. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. So even though the Lord knows our, the plans he has for us, if you don't connect with God and build a relationship with God, how can you understand the plans he has for you? Because there's a relationship you have to have with God in order for him to articulate what's best for you. 
So what I say to you, get connected. You can't stay to the left or to the right. Stay in the middle of the road. God is before you. Focus on what he's calling you to do. Get ready, because when he say, Elder Tyra, you're next. You say, I got next, I'm ready. You got to pay attention. You got to be about God's business. So I ask of you, how do we prepare for being next? Identify yourself with Christ. To know where we are going, we have to know who we are. Submit your whole self to God and trust him. James 4 and 7 through 8 says, submit yourselves then to God. Resist, resist the devil and he will flee from you because the devil is raging. And for anyone who don't believe when I say yes to the Lord, I'm going to serve you, that the devil is going to say, oh, he's one of hers. She's one of his. I'm going to leave her alone. No, no, he intensifies the fire. He almost makes you want to turn around and say, I don't want it anymore. It's not that. It's not, it's not good enough. But the Lord will give you a glimpse of glory to give you hope. To say, in spite of what I'm going through, I'm pressing on. In spite of what is going on in my family's life, I'm pressing on. I don't have a job, but I know I'm going to get one. I'm pressing on. You got to know without a shadow of a doubt. You have to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. For your labor will not be in vain. So if you don't know him, I encourage you to get to know him. Third thing is pray and spend time with God. Romans 12 and 2, do not conform to the, do not conform to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let me tell you about your mind. Let me, let, let me tell you about your mind. About 10 years ago, I have a friend, she's still my friend, but she lost her mind. And the commercial was talking about drugs. Mind is a terrible thing to waste. But it don't have to be drugs that you lose your mind. But it's hard to get your mind back when you lose your mind because the enemy takes hold of your mind. And the Lord told me, you're going to help her get her mind back. I said, God, no, no, What? Didn't matter what time of the night she ended up coming to stay with me. Didn't matter what time of the night, what time in the morning, the Lord woke me as she was coming. God said, pray with me. And he was telling me, you need to pray with her. You need to encourage her. You need to talk her through. It was anxiety. It was everything that was causing her to feel like she couldn't amount to anything. She couldn't be anything. She couldn't live in this world. She couldn't work. I said, not only are you going to work. You got to live. And if you serve him, he'll take care of you. So I said, I'm a vessel used by God. I'm going to just do what the Lord tells me to do. And I prayed and I prayed and I talked and I prayed. I said, listen, God, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do other than what you're telling me to do. So whatever you're telling me to do, I know it's going to work because you told me to do it. But that also has to do with being in the right posture, being in the right position, being ready to be next. I can tell you today, she got her right mind. Working, making more money she ever made in her life. Knowing who God is and what God's done for her, she can tell a story about what you got to do to keep your mind. We got to renew our mind daily with God. Die daily in our mind because our mind is a trickster if we're not careful. We don't know what's going on. Before we know it, we're doing something we have no business doing because we allowed our mind to take control. Renewing of the mind. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you, then listen and obey. John 10, 4, 10, 14 and 15 says, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, 
even so I know the Father. What does that mean? That means a relationship. My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. But a, 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 a lamb, a, a baby lamb, if you're not careful, they're following everything. They're going to and fro, don't know what to serve, who to trust, what to, and they find themselves in a mess. But we are our brother and sister's keeper. So if you see a babe going astray, tuck him, pull him, they're blind, help them. Don't talk about them. How can you let your, how can the Lord use you if you test it and don't pass the test? We all are being tested daily. If you don't believe me, keep living. You'll be tested. And you better have something on the inside to pull on, to make it through the test. Because the grace is not given to the swift nor the strong, but it's to the one who endureth. And we want to be able to endure the test. We want to be able to stand strong and be counted. We, the people of God, got next as we stand on the promises of God. He will never leave you nor forsake you. They that wait on the Lord shall renew your strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When, when it's real hard, and you're travailing, you say, weeping may endure through the night, but joy is coming in the morning. When things are coming against you, you say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. They gonna form, but they not gonna prosper. My power's made perfect in weakness. Got to know that you got something on the inside that when things get hard, you got to call on the goodness of Jesus. You got to do, no, no, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, I need you. I'm going through something now. It's not that pretty prayer. prayer. You can pray the pretty prayer, but when you need God in an in a instant, you better call on him in an instant. He's, he's there. He's waiting. But by the time you, oh, Lord, I need you. And it, you can say, Jesus, I need you. He's already there. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Now, I will tell you from living, uh, use another word if you don't want long suffering. Because when you call on patience, patience goes with long suffering. And long-suffering is as long as God say, long. <laughs> so, I will encourage you. Lord, help me to endure. <laughs> no, I don't need no more patience. I'm good. I got what I need through the last trials, through the last situation, through the long suffering I endured. But you have to know in spite of, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And more so than that, brethren, I do not count myself have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, reaching for to those things which are ahead. I press toward the mark of the high calling, which is Christ Jesus. I say that because there's a lot of people looking back. We have to think like Abraham, when the Lord told him to leave his familiar country and go forward. He went. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't question God, he went. Now Lot, he didn't tell him to bring Lot. So Lot has a whole different story. That's a whole nother sermon right there. But Lot and his wife, his wife, she didn't have the same relationship because if, when he told her, she would have listened. But she liked what she was leaving. And she looked back. <laughs> 
listen, everyone didn't leave a terrible world of sin. When I say that, they didn't leave it in a terrible way. Some people enjoyed what they was doing and it was good at it. But when the Lord says, come from amongst them and be ye separate, that's what you must do. So you have to walk away and don't look back. People of God, stand firm. Trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. I'm not telling you this road's going to be easy. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be a bit of ease, better ease. But what I'm telling you, if you believe God, and you don't even have to believe me. If you believe God, I dare you to try him. I dare you to trust him. I dare you to do it for your own self. And you will realize this is the best thing that ever happened to me. When my daughter, one thing, I'm going to let you go. When my daughter, her car was in an accident, they were fine, but her car was total. She was so distraught. She said, I worked so hard for this car, Ma, I paid it off in a year, and she did. And I said, we don't see what God sees. We don't know what God knows. And it very well may be a blessing in disguise. Though you wanted that tangible thing, God has something better for you. And the Lord has opened the door that she's going to get more than she thought for the total of the car. But she has her life. She has her health. She has her strength. These things you can always get. But I'd rather have a wrecked car sitting in front of my door than the hearse ready to carry her out. Trust him. Believe him. Acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Bless you. Let's keep your hands together for the woman of God and the word of God. What a mighty word of God from God, from the vessel of God. Amen. Can somebody say amen and thank God for the word, for the word, for the word, for our food, for our dinner for today. Hallelujah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through your vessel. If you have not given, and I see that many are still coming, if you have not given and yet desire to give, we invite you to give to sow into the woman of God and be a blessing unto her. If you'd like to give at this time, you may come. She did not uh, declare that if anybody does not know Jesus at this time, we'd like to offer Christ to you if the word has touched you and penetrated your heart and if you desire and would love to come to know Jesus you're next you are next in line for salvation if anybody among us does not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin we certainly invite you to come to Christ his arms are wide open we will welcome you to Jesus Christ as Lord of our life and your Savior if not, if anybody desire prayer, if not, we're going home. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. High five your neighbor and say, I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Amen. Yes, daughter. Deacons, she desires to give. 
Thank you. Thank you for your liberal giving. Thank you for all that have sown into the kingdom. Thank you for your seeds. May God bless and multiply them for the building of the kingdom. Thank you, Elder Kim, for that word from God to us. We receive it. We receive it. Get in posture. Get in position. I'm next. Don't be surprised if I come driving up here in my car. I'm next in line. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I receive it. Look at your neighbor and say, may God cover you. May God keep you. And may he mightily bless you until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.